After 15 years, the interior teak on our boat was looking tired and absolutely filthy, but a deep cleaning followed by refinishing has it looking beautiful. Hi there, I'm Carolyn Sherlock, and on this episode of the Boat Galley Podcast, I'll share the exact steps I followed to clean Barefoot Gal's teak. It took work, no two ways about it, but the results were amazing. Now, today's episode of the Boat Galley Podcast is sponsored by Teak Guard Products, the products that I use to clean and refinish our teak. But wait, I'm not just a shill for them. I bought their products to use on Barefoot Gal and absolutely loved them. I then contacted them because I had such good results, so much easier than anything else I'd used over the years of our two boats. And it was an absolutely gorgeous result. Their non-toxic water-based formulas for cleaning and finishing will turn your teak from dingy to sparkling in no time. Use coupon code BG20 for 15% off your order of $50 or more. Teak Guard. Admire your teak with less maintenance. And now I'll tell you exactly how our teak went from black to beautiful. Okay, Barefoot Gal has a fair amount of interior teak, one large wall plus lots of trim, and it was horribly, horribly dark with years of teak oil. In some places, it was black with mold, and then there were light spots where the previous owners had pictures and hadn't oiled underneath. The first step in refinishing it was to clean it thoroughly to make the cover even and get rid of any mold. I use Teak Guard Super Cleaner. Amazing stuff. I have never used a product that worked as well. However, I did learn certain techniques. Okay, let's start with what you're going to need. You're going to need some blue painter's tape. Get several widths of it. Drop cloths. Um, I use large trash bags as being a better size than large drop cloths. Foam brushes, one inch and one and a half were the most used size for my teak. I reuse them for day to day, but they do disintegrate after a few days. So you may want to get a pack of 25 or so. A small scrub brush and an even smaller brush for crevices. You'll see links to all these products in the show notes. You're going to need a small cup to hold some of the cleaner. A plastic cup is best. Paper, it'll start soaking through. You're going to need a three to five quart bucket for water. Don't use anything that you're going to later use for food or potable water. You're going to want 60 and 80 grit wet, dry sandpaper. You may want 120 grit for areas with real thin veneer. I primarily use the 3M Pro Grade Precision Paper. It's purple colored. And if you look really hard on the back of the package, it says it can be used wet or dry. It doesn't say that it's wet dry right off the top, but it is. A sanding block. I used the blocks that were like a hard, sort of a semi-hard foam and sanding paper on the outside. Now, you could just sand with one of those, but they're expensive and they generate a lot of trash. I bought a couple of them and wrapped the sandpaper around them, but the foam was really good for getting around curves and so forth. You're going to need a whole bunch of clean rags and water. And if your teak has a previous finish, like varnish, that actually has to be sanded off, you'll need a whisk broom with a dustpan at the very least. A vacuum cleaner is also a huge help in cleaning up. For large areas, an electric random orbital sander with some wet, dry sandpaper is also useful. In that case, you're going to want appropriate sanding discs, wet and dry, and a good vacuuming cleaner. My technique for cleaning the teak is a little bit different from the instructions given by the company, simply because my teak was so filthy. They say to spray the teak cleaner on. I used a foam brush to just soak the teak with it. And since I was working inside on much of it, I couldn't simply run a hose over it to rinse, but I had to use rags and wipe it off. Now, it's important to note that the clean teak should have the first coat of finish put on it within 24 hours of cleaning. Otherwise, the natural oils in the teak will rise to the surface, and the finish won't here as well. Plus, the mold can start to regrow. You can apply the finish as soon as the teak is dry. I always did it the next day. 
So don't clean more teak than you can apply finish to the next day. And if you're working outside, watch those weather reports. One sort of pro tip on the cleaning, have patience. Don't try to work too fast or do too large of a section at one time. Give the cleaner enough time to work and don't get overly aggressive with scrubbing or sanding. So I had five sort of categories of teak to clean. There was teak that had to be left in place, like trim pieces, teak that could be removed, teak that was previously varnished, a large teak wall, and I even had teak that was horribly stained with used motor oil. Okay, let's start first with the basic technique. And really, this is what I used on all of the teak that was left in place. If the teak has any sort of finish on it beyond oil, like varnish, sitol, semco, or wax, that finish has to be removed before cleaning. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. So I'm talking about teak here that doesn't have any of those finishes. Start by masking off your teak using the blue tape painter's tape and drop cloths as necessary. The cleaner isn't going to harm gel coat or formica, but it will clean it. If you're using it on exterior teak, say a tow rail, the folks at Teak Guards say to wax the area thoroughly around it to avoid any clean streaks. Put about a half an inch of the super cleaner in a small cup and then use a foam brush to apply it to a small section of the teak. Let it sit eh, three to five minutes, then apply a second coat of the cleaner. Put a few inches of water in the bucket, wet one of the brushes, and scrub the teak brown gunk will start coming off and collecting in the brush. Just keep rinsing it out by swishing it in the bucket of water. The brown gunk is the old teak oil and dirt. Keep a wet rag to rinse off the teak. Keep scrubbing and rinsing until the rinse rag just isn't picking much up. Then move to the next section. An alternate method, if your teak is badly stained, apply the teak cleaner the same way with the foam brush. But instead of using a brush, Wrap a quarter sheet of wet dry sandpaper around a sanding block and dunk it in the water to get it wet. Start with 80 grit first. If necessary, go to the 60 grit. Sand the area where the teak cleaner is. Now, you don't want to sand too much of the wood away, but you need to get the teak oil out. As the sandpaper clogs with the brown gunk, dunk it in the water and use a brush on the sandpaper to remove the gunk. Rinse the teak with a rag like I did before. Okay, super cleaner is non-toxic, so it's safe to use where it may get in the water. It's fine to get it all over your hands and stuff. Treat your rinse water as you would any other gray water on the boat. Let your teak dry. Now, I leave it masked off for finishing the next day, unless the teak has dislodged with my cleaning. Okay, for pieces that can be removed, much of our teak had to be removed anyways for reupholstering our settees. It was much easier to clean it by taking it out to the cockpit. I could get the whole piece, sit and stand more comfortably, and I didn't have to worry about surrounding upholstery. And I could just rinse with as much water as I wanted. We removed doors and many trim pieces. Even though it's a bit of a pain to remove and then replace all the teak, it does make the overall job easier. I think both cleans and seals the wood better. The basic technique was the same. Brush on the super cleaner, wet sand it, rinse and repeat until there was very little brown gunk coming off. These pieces were horribly dirty on our boat. So I really didn't use the scrub brush on any. It was sanding. Your teak, if it's not so filthy, you might get by with just using a scrub brush. And of course, let everything dry. We've got varnished teak. This was like the teak in our head. It had been varnished to make it more waterproof. Also, all of our floorboards have. I sanded all of that off using an electric sandpaper. And with that, I just used the sandpaper dry, not wet. For all of it, I used the electrical orbital sander. Initially, I was afraid to use 60 grit as I knew the wood was a veneer, but I soon discovered that the varnish was tougher than I realized. I was still very careful and set the sander to a very slow speed where I had more control. For the tin pieces that couldn't be removed, I did. I masked off the surrounding area with a double layer of blue tape and put drop cloths where I thought the sanding gunk would fall. I did a combination of hand sanding and using a Dremel sanding wheel to get all the varnish off of these. Now, beware. 
sanding dust is going to go all over the place. You will find it in places you never expect it. A good vacuum will help the cleanup, but removing as much other stuff as possible before you do it will help. Now, once everything was down to bare teak, I brushed it with a super cleaner and for the doors and trim that had previously had varnish on it. I went over it all with a scrub brush and rinsed. These pieces weren't badly stained under the varnish and cleaning them was really simple. The varnish on the floorboards, however, had blistered and peeled in some places, so I had to clean those areas more thoroughly using the wet sandpaper with the super cleaner. Again, I left everything to dry thoroughly overnight after a really, really good rinsing. Okay, we had this teak wall. Barefoot Gal has this large, I'll just call it a showpiece teak wall, and a couple sections of teak wall near the companionway. The ones near the companionway were very, very dark, but cleaned up easily using the super cleaner and hand wet sanding. The showpiece wall honestly scared me, and it was the last piece that I did, having tested out all my techniques first. I knew it was the first thing you saw when you walked in Barefoot Gal. And it was in horrible, horrible shape with light and dark sections where pictures had been and hadn't been. And plus there were like 30 screw holes left from pictures had been removed. I also knew it was a very thick, thin veneer. And while I knew I was going to have to sand it to even the color out, I was scared of sanding through the veneer. Again, I brushed just copious quantities of the super cleaner on and let it sit, then brushed more on, doing a small section of the time. I started by hand sanding the finicky bits, then collected all my courage. This was scary. And I got out the electric sander with 120 grit wet dry sandpaper. I used it wet and at very, very slow speeds with a light touch. It worked. Okay, finally, we had this beautiful, beautiful teak counter that had gotten stained with teak used motor oil. I had no idea if I was going to be able to get that motor oil out of what should have been basically another showpiece teak counter. My goal was to get the motor oil out, but not make that section of the teak noticeably lighter than the rest of the counter. I started by masking things off again with blue tape and the trash bags. Then I brushed the super cleaner on and I let it sit, brushed more on, wet sanded and rinsed. It took six cleanings and sandings if I counted correctly. I did all the sanding by hand. If I were to do this again, I would probably use the electric sander with finer grit sandpaper, a very slow speed, and a gentle touch. This was one of the first real showpiece areas that I tried. And what I would say is, if when you, as you're using, trying to use the sander on some of this stuff, maybe do it on the backside of something first, kind of get a feel for it, and then progress to the really visible areas. The counter and the backsplash behind it and the tiny shelf took five days. This is for a counter that's about eight feet long. So when it was all done, I did one final quick clean over it all using the super cleaner and a scrub brush just to get any oil that had risen to the surface while I'd worked on other sections. Then I rinsed it and let it dry overnight. Okay, that was it. That was how I got our, clean, our teak looking like teak again after it had been absolutely black with mold used motor oil, and who knows what else, um, basically gunk from teak oil. Seriously, it took a while, yes, but it wasn't that horrible. I did it working maybe an hour a day over a period of probably, I don't know, three weeks or so. It wasn't that horrid of a job on any one day, but you can get gorgeous results with a super teak cleaner. Okay, that's it for today. I know it's a long podcast. Anyways, thanks for listening to us. Make sure that you never miss a helpful episode. Subscribe today in your favorite podcast app if you're not already subscribed. Thanks. Thanks.